Hello everyone, and thanks for uh, clicking on our review of the Mizuno Neo Vista. Uh, Con and I appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, or share the video, and ding the bell for notifications. Full disclosure, I bought the Mizuno Neo Vista with my own money, so all thoughts and opinions are my own, and they are of course subjective to my own needs and characteristics as a runner. Uh, I bought them in person at a local running store, Charlotte Running Company, the Dilworth location to be specific. Uh, I try to buy all of my running shoes from local running stores whenever possible, and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, barring be able to do that in person, then I would suggest uh, looking up those local running stores online if you could and seeing if you can give them your business that way. All right, guys, here we go. Okay, so before I go on my first run in the Mizuno Neo Vista, uh, I'll talk about the fit a little bit. I went true to size in my U.S. men's nine and a half. Um, this knit upper uh, is a lot more secure than you would expect a knit upper to be. Uh, the pull tab here, very useful in getting the shoe on. It's not terribly hard to get on, but the pull tab makes it very easy. I feel like I have plenty of toe room. Uh, you guys know I wear in gingies, so I let my toes move around and splay. Um, it's That doesn't mean it's not nice and snug, uh, but it's not racer snug. It's more like performance trainer snug. Uh, still with some freedom. The laces are pretty good. Um, I mean, I haven't run in them yet, we'll see. But the lacing system, there's a lot of friction in the lacing system, so the laces don't feel like they move around a lot. We'll see what happens on the run. But very true to size, fits my foot very well. Um, we'll see if there are any hot spots or anything. It is shoe off time for the Mizuno Neo Vista, and I'm gonna be comparing it with some other super trainers, including some racing shoes that I use as super trainers, uh, with one exception. Uh, so the ASIC Super Blast, New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, the uh, On Cloud Eclipse, the Adidas, at a zero prime x strong version one the nike alpha fly two not the alpha fly three but the alpha fly two and the racing companion the mizuno wave rebellion pro two all right let's get started okay i'll be starting with the super blast against the neo vista okay so the Super Blast is definitely firmer than the Mizuno Neo Vista. Uh, it is also a little bit more stable, even though the Neo Vista has a plate, a plastic plate, and the Super Blast does not. But the Flight Foam Turbo in the Super Blast is certainly a very stiff foam. Now, these Super Blasts have a lot of miles on them, but they still feel similar to they did when they were new. Um, I think if you want a bouncy response, something a little more dynamic, then I would go with the Mizuno Neo Vista. But if you need something more stable underfoot, then the Super Blast is your shoe. All right, New Balance SC Trainer V2 and Mizuno Neo Vista. All right, I've made no secret that the SC Trainer V2, I do not like nearly as much as I liked the V1, even though the V1 was a little more unstable. But running with the Neo Vista kind of reminds me why I prefer the SC Trainer V1. The Neo Vista is more like the SC Trainer V1, except a little more stable than that shoe even though it was less stable than the Super Blast that I just ran with. Um, the Mizuno just has a livelier foam. That super critical EVA, just as thick as it is, is bouncier. 
than the 39 millimeters of um, fuel cell underneath the SC trainer. Also, that 39 millimeters feels low <laughs> compared to the like 44 millimeters or whatever under the Mizuno. They're both pretty maximal shoes. And the carbon plate in the SU Trainer V2 feels kind of superfluous when the plastic plate in the Mizuno does all I need to do. The uh, New Balance just feels stiff. Both of these shoes have a large gap, a large void or channel in the midsection. But I feel like I noticed the void in the New Balance, not so much in the Mizuno. So this is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 in the Mizuno Neo Vista. So I have to say I'm kind of surprised having these two side by side. The Endorphin Speed 4 has a plastic plate with a full midsole of Power Run PB, which is a Piba foam. And the Mizuno Neo Vista has a plastic plate with a full midsole of Energy NXT, which is a super critical EVA. And you would think the Piba is gonna be softer and bouncier, or at least bouncier. The Energy NXT in the Mizuno is softer and it's probably because there's quite a few more millimeters underfoot of it it's just thicker it's more cushioning but it's giving that softer response and slower bounce so use case scenario i think if you were to ask me right now i might want the mizuno neo vista for a long run over the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. But as far as which one's more versatile, I'd have to think on that a little bit more. I foresee this being a very interesting comparison. This is the On Cloud Eclipse and the Mizuno Neo Vista. So this is a very interesting sensation. Um, the Cloud Eclipse, I would normally count as a very smooth shoe, particularly for an on shoe. Um, you just kind of feel the Cloud Tech phase working with you. But next to the Neo Vista, um, I can really tell where the rubber is underneath the Cloud Tech phase. Um, so it feels not as smooth. Don't get me wrong, still a smooth midsole experience, but the Mizuno Neo Vista is far smoother. It might just be with the way that slow compression of the Energy NXT rolls with the geometry of the beveled heel and beveled forefoot, but the Mizuno feels smooth and creamy next to the On. The on is still a great response, but it's gonna be easy day only, whereas the Mizuno feels like it might be able to do more things. More on that later. All right, on to the soft, thick boys. The Mizuno Neo Vista with the Adidas Adizero Prime X Strong version one. All right, both of these shoes are super stacked, meaning they're well over the 40 millimeters. That is legal. Um, the Mizuno, I think, is 44 in the heel, but the Adidas is 50. And this is the only shoe that really makes the Mizuno feel low to the ground. Uh, to be clear, in isolation, the Neo Vista does not feel terribly high. Maybe I've just gotten used to running in high stack shoes lately, but the Primex Strong always feels high. 
Now, ride experience. It feels similarly soft. And I feel like the Neo Vista is doing just as much with less, meaning with a plastic plate and with supercritical EVA rather than energy rods and carbon with the TPEE and the uh, Light Strike Pro. Also, the Neo Vista is far more stable than the first version of the Prime X. And they both have really nice knit uppers. Although I think I kind of pre prefer the Mizuno upper right now. The Mizuno seems like less of a novelty shoe and something I can more use every day. So why, you might ask, am I comparing the Mizuno Neo Vista, solidly a super trainer, with the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, uh, which is intended to be um, a top of the end racer, is because, as everyone knows, the Alpha Fly 2 is the worst of the Alpha Flies, and I kind of treat it like I do the Prime X as more of a super trainer than anything. So for me, these two are kind of crossing over in roles. Let's see how they do together. So it should be no surprise that the big slab of Zoom X combined with the AirPods and the carbon plate is bouncier than the Energy NXT and plastic plate in the Mizuno. But this was a $275 high-end racing shoe. And this is a $180 high-end training shoe. And which one would I want to spend a couple hours on foot doing an LSD run? Probably the Mizuno, because it feels better around my foot. The Alpha Fly 2 is famously bad for issues under the arch with a lot of people. Never really bothered me that much, but I notice it. And really, I don't know if you're going to find any Alpha Fly 2s around. There's probably still some on sale, but most would wager that you're overpaying for the Alpha Fly when you could get something that fills that super trainer role and does so a little bit more elegantly with the Mizuno Neo Vista. So if I was gonna go for a long run and it had a whole lot of marathon pace, I might use the Alpha Fly too. But if I was just gonna go for a long run LSD, even if there was some pace, I'd probably reach for the Mizuno. All right, to be honest, this last one's kind of just for fun because these are Mizuno brand mates, the Neo Vista Super Trainer and the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, their Super Racer. So the intended training companion to the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is the Wave Rebellion Flash 2. But, hold on, let me get past this car. I have not reviewed that one. I have no interest in it. There are plenty of people who have reviewed it, people that I trust, and yeah, I think I'm gonna pass on that one. However, the Neo Vista could be considered as a training companion for the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Both have a beveled geometry, although the Pro 2 has a much more prominent bevel to it, which you can tell when you're going side by side. However, since they're both beveled, they do kind of relate to one another. Foams are different, plate experiences are different, uppers are very different, but you could tell there's a similar lineage there. I think one could work as a training partner for the other. However, the Rebellion Pro 2 is very niche as far as a racing shoe, in my opinion. Whereas the Mizuno Neo Vista, 
I think would be a little bit more accommodating to a larger cross-section of runners. I've heard some people say they would rather run a marathon in the Neo Vista than in the Rebellion Pro. And I could see that. But I'll talk more about that later during the shoe talk. And that is a wrap for today's shoe off. I'm gonna get all my thoughts together before the shoe talk. Gotta do another shoe off later this week, but I can't talk about that one until next week, so you'll just have to stay tuned. All right, shoe talk time, and we are talking about the Mizuno Neo Vista, the new super trainer, high stack super trainer. And um, I'll just talk about the features of it. It uses a Mizuno Energy NXT uh, midsole, which is a super critical EVA. And I'm not sure if there are two densities or if it's one density, but uh, those two layers are split by this, tap the plate, um, by this wave plate they have here running the length of the shoe and it is a plastic plate. Uh, you can tell there's a large void in the midsole to cut down on weight, but you really don't notice the void when you are on the run. The midsole is protected by uh, virtually full coverage uh, of their outsole rubber, and there's pretty good traction on this rubber. Uh, there's a, a few uh, scores in the rubber there. I don't know if that is for aesthetics or just to add a little bit of extra traction, um, but the outsole works. The knit upper is one of the big stories of this shoe. Um, this is not a class of shoe that you would normally want a knit upper like this, especially with this, this mid-rise top. It's kind of a mid-rise top. However, this knit upper is, is very secure as far as knit uppers go. The craftsmanship is very good. The lacing system, even though there is that um, kind of thick string running through the lacing system, almost like the knit upper on the uh, New Balance SC Elite V3. I think it works so much better with Mizuno here. It doesn't feel like there's any danger of that coming undone. There's enough friction in the system where once you get it locked in, it's gonna stay locked in. The laces are okay. Uh, I, it did come untied on me once or twice on the run, but that might have been just me carelessly tying uh, rather than the, the laces themselves. The pull tab on the back here is useful for getting the shoe on and off because otherwise it would be take a little while. There is minimal structure in the heel counter. I can collapse it a little bit, but there's some rigidity there in this um, sewn in piece. Okay, so those are the features of the shoe. Very comfortable shoe to have on foot, very comfortable shoe to run in. The run experience is very smooth. You do get um, a deep compression in the supercritical EVA and a, I kind of call it a slow response. That is not to say that it is a slow shoe. It's just that it's a very gentle, smooth, uh, creamy response. Creamy is the word I would describe for it. Um, and the uh, smooth speed assist, which is basically the name Mizuno gives for their geometry, their rocker geometry, the beveled heel, beveled forefoot, really works with this midsole construction um, and works at a variety of paces. I find it enjoyable at an easy pace where I do 80% of my runs, um, makes it a great long run shoe. However, I feel like I can easily progress through marathon pace or maybe a little faster and just feel like I'm still getting a good response from the shoe. I've taken it up even to strides, which are you know at a much higher pace, and it felt good there. Again, it's not something I would pick for a speed workout, but it's gonna handle a, a variety of paces. I think it's gonna be strongest at those uh, LSD miles. Uh, it is $180 in the United States, which is the same price as the On Cloud Eclipse, same price as the Hoka Mach X, which I don't have on the table here, and uh, the Saucony Kinvara Pro, which I have never owned and don't plan on owning. Um, holding these two in hand, what I would rather pick for a long run day is gonna be the Neo Vista. The On Cloud Eclipse is a wonderful shoe and I've given it great reviews. It feels good on foot. Um, but again, this is gonna be for easy days only. Uh, you could pick up the pace, but it's not what I would choose. Um, and this is also a good, a good casual shoe, but uh, as smooth as this feels, the Neo Vista feels smoother. Um, 
in the super trainer category, uh, things that I would compare it to. I talked about the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 when doing the shoe off and about which one of these would be more versatile. I still think the Speed 4 is gonna be more versatile because it's gonna be more inclined to faster paces. Uh, long runs with a majority at marathon pace, uh, maybe some, even some faster paces. However, this is a full PIBA midsole, this is Supercritical EVA, and PIBA is great, it's very responsive, but it is inherently unstable, even with this plastic plate in the Speed 4. I think the Mizuno Neo Vista is more inherently stable. Uh, so if you're gonna be on foot for a longer time or if you're tired, uh, I might choose this. But if you want to do a variety of paces in a workout, uh, maybe the Endorphin Speed 4 would be great for that. When I do Summer Grit next month in July and I'm doing 400 miles, both of these are gonna have a lot of those miles in them. I talked about the stability of the shoe. It is not as stable as something like the Adidas Adidas Zero Boston 12, which I would put in the same category as the Speed 4, but the Boston 12 is not as enjoyable to run in. The upper is far and away not in the same league as the Neo Vista, but even the midsole response is just not as exciting. This is a great shoe, jack of all trades, master of none, but I think the Mizuno Neo Vista is a little more enjoyable to run in, to spend time on foot in. And then another shoe I would compare it to directly would be the Adidas Adizero Prime X Strong V1. I do not have the version two, which is a lot more stable than this one, but also a lot heavier. These shoes are of similar weight. I think holding them in hand, the Neo Vista might even be a tad heavier, but it is far more stable. I still get a lot of the fun factor that I would get in the Prime X Strong in the Neo Vista, but I don't feel as wobbly. Um, the Prime X is always fun to run in, but as I've said before uh, when comparing it with other shoes, this is kind of a novelty shoe for me, and uh, I've taken it on long runs, and by the end of the long run, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired and weary um, of just working through that much foam. I know some people have run marathons in them, and just felt tired kind of working against getting over that hump of the foam at the end of the marathon. I feel like this shoe would continue working with me and rolling through smoothly. Smooth is the name of the game for this shoe, smooth and comfortable. Now you're gonna pay a premium for that. Like I said, it's $180 in the United States. Um, I was able to get it at a little bit of a discount for knowing the right people, um, but I think it's worth $180, and uh, I'm excited to see what other colors come out. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of miles on this next month for Summer Grit, and I'm probably gonna do a high mileage follow-up review on it after. So stay tuned, I've got more reviews coming up. Uh, thanks for listening to my shoe talk. This has been the Mizuno Neo Vista. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or share the video and ding the bell for notifications. Thanks guys, see you on the next run.